Welcome to the Guernica Peace Museum. This museum was opened in 1998 by the Town Council of Guernica and since 2002 it's a foundation which trustees are the Town Council of Guernica, the Regional Government of Vizcaya and the Basque Government. This museum wants to make think the visitor about three questions. What is peace? What happened in Guernica during the moment of lack of peace during the Spanish Civil War and the bombing? And what happens nowadays with peace and human rights in the war and in the Basque Country? It's a museum that uh, offers different services as a, documentation, a specialized documentation center on the bombing of Guernica and the Spanish Civil War, uh, educational department and guided tours in four languages. And it's a museum that uh, participates very actively in different international networks and national networks as IPATH, uh, Foro de Derechos Humanos, International Network of Museums for Peace, Sites of Conscience and ICOM. What is peace? Peace is a difficult balance among various languages, different cultures and outlooks, the different situations and the millions of hopes and desires in the minds of our civilization here on planet Earth. Peace is a positive energy deeply rooted in life and in our wishes and abilities. It is a peace that fights from the non-violence and that blindly believes that we can still change the world. There is no way for peace Peace is the way. The first idea, and maybe the most known, is the concept of the Agreed Peace, also called Pax Romana, referring to the peace of treaties, the peace of agreements after one war. We must consider that peace is not the opposite of war. Many wars that are supposed to be finished of the senator of a peace treaty are still prevailing, and they do not mean a real peace situation. We can find many examples as Iraq, Afghanistan. The second idea makes reference to the concept of inner peace, we can get feeling well with ourselves through meditation and retirement, the contemplation, the praying. The third idea is the peace in relationship to respect to nature, also called eco-pacifism. What are we doing with the resources given to us by nature? What is the relationship between the respect to nature and conflicts created by us? As an example, the cold in production for electronic devices, the culture of using and throwing, the use and accessibility to water, and we could wonder, what kind of planet shall we leave to future generations? The fourth idea is the everyday peace. We should all have our basic need, needs satisfied. Food, education, home, job, justice, health service. In those places where those basic needs are not being satisfied, there will always be conflicts. An example of this dressmaking industry and exploitation, slavery of the 21st century, gender violence, the right for education and justice, equal for everyone. We shall finish this walk, reminding that we all can contribute in a small way for peace. We all know people who have been peace movement le leaders, as Martin Luther King, Wangari Matai, Gandhi, Rigoberta Menchu, Mandela. We all can take part in that, working in favor of peace and human rights. We are now in the room of the peace of the 21st century, where it is very important to understand that the word conflict should not have a negative meaning, because it is a moment that helps us grow, helps us change. It is an opportunity to fix things that are not working well. And which kind of tools could we use to solve our conflicts? So simple tools, but so difficult at the same time, as, for example, a firm dialogue, respect for human rights, to put ourselves in the other party's position listen to different opinions, searching for common ground. Direct violence, physical or verbal and visible, is the tip of the iceberg, what can be easily seen. But the most important piece of this iceberg of violence is what we know as structure violence or culture violence, what is under the water. We can find a lot of direct violence samples as to hit, to insult someone, break things, Social inequality could be considered an example of structural violence and sexism of the or the impossibility to choose or to express ourselves in one language could be a way of cultural violence. In order to work for peace today, we must try, we must turn this iceberg of violence upside down, dealing with peace from a direct structure and culture level. We are now going to travel back in time to begin the second part of the exhibition, which is about what happened 
of the bombing of Guernica and the Spanish Civil War. I invite you to get into Begonia's house and go back to the 26th of April of 1937. Begonia, a lady from Guernica, will tell us about her life before the bombing and we shall live a few moments of that day with her. After having lived the bombing, we are now in front of a fragile and destroyed city, as you can see. In this room, we will spell out the most remarkable moments of the history of Guernica Lumo. Guernica is and has been a symbol for the Basque people, modeled for the bombing and the creation of Picasso's painting Guernica. How was Guernica in the 30s? What caused the Spanish Civil War? For a better understanding of how we can get to such a serious situation, it is important to know that the previous years meant a period of upheaval due to political and social tensions, what brought to an unsuccessful coup d'etat against the legitimate government of the Second Republic that ended in the Spanish Civil War, a war that begins in 1936 and finishes in 1939 and divides Spain into sides, the Republican one and the rebel, national or revolted one. Since the conquering of Madrid was not being possible, Franco sets off to the north to begin the North Campaign in spring of 1937, and then the bombings of Ochandio, Durango, Guernica and so on take place. This will be finished by the 19th of June of 1937, with the falling of Bilbao and the war ending for Euskadi. This campaign under the command of General Mola intensifies since March the 31st, when Durango is bombed. One of the most important and symbolic moments is lived with the bombing of Guernica. As Begonia has told us, the day of the bombing, the 26th of April of 1937, was Monday, a market day, and Guernica was more crowded than usual. There were 5,630 inhabitants registered at the time, and in those days it ended having about 10,000 people among the refugees, injured people, three battalions of Basque soldiers and people from the outskirts. Around four, around four in the afternoon, the bells of St. Mary, Mary Church began to ring, warning the citizens about the arrival of airplanes. These planes belonging to the German Condor Legion, preceded and escorted by the Italian legionary aviation, are the ones that bombed Guernica during about three hours, throwing a lot of breaking bombs from 50 to 250 kilos, the bombs, fire bombs, and machine gunning, people chasing out from the city. What was the aim of the bombing of Guernica? According to the rebels, Guernica and Renteria Bridge were a military target that had to be destroyed to avoid the Republican troops going in or out of the city. There was no need to use fire bombs and machine gun people to destroy a bridge of that size. This is not a true version. The main objective is the populations and the Basque army's demoralization to succeed in the surrendering of Euskadi. It is not a military target, but a bombing of terror that tried to train war methods to be used during the Second World War. This is one of the first bombings against an open village. More than 85% of the town was totally destroyed. Only a few buildings remained still standing, among them the arm factories in the industry area, the tree of Guernica, and the assembly house and the bridge of Renteria. Even nowadays there is a, a great argument about the number of victims. The Basque government of that date estimated that there had been 1,654 deceased after having an account of bodies and people who, had, who died in hospitals, mass graves, and the ones who died in St. Mary Street shelter. The revisionists talk about 12 to 200. It is very difficult to have a precise number of victims. Although from the general headquarters in Salamanca it was said that there was no news about any bombing, every responsibility should be looked among these people. Richthofen, Bigon, Mola and finally Franco. We cannot forget that Germans and Italians were at the service of Franco. That night, some international journalists, as George Steer and Noel Monks, succeeded in getting to Guernica from Bilbao, and they were the first ones in taking the testimony of the survivors and publishing what had really happened. This fact meant an important international commotion. 
The rebels never admitted their taking part in the bombing, since their version was that Guernica had been set on fire by the, res by the Red Basque and Asturian separatists on the runaway to the front. Three days after the bombing, on April 29th, the rebel troops came to Guernica with Italian, German and Moroccan soldiers in order to occupy the city. Guernica was bombed in 1937 and war finished in 1939 with the victory of the rebels. During the 40s, Guernica was included in the devastated regions program as it fulfilled the two necessary conditions for the, for the rebuilding. More than the 70% of the village had to have been destroyed the destruction was over the 85% in this case, and Franco had to be adopted by the town. The rebuilding took place the following years, and it was the Republican prisoners who worked on it. From this moment and forward, what happened in Guernica was silenced until the 80s. The survivors do not want to forget what happened. That is why, in 1987, for the 50th anniversary of the bombing, they gave the first steps towards reconciliation through our training with the German city of Fort Time, the apologies sent on a letter by the German Councillor Roman Herzog, and many acts that followed. At this round room called in memoriam, a sentence for the survivors can be read. Refuse to forget, refuse to take revenge. Here, we deal with many reconciliation processes, not only between Guernica and Germany, but the ones that have been in some other places in the world as Northern Ireland, South Africa and so on. Although this is a critical period, in 1937 the Republican government decides to take part in the World Exhibition of Paris in order to show the whole world what was happening during the Spanish Civil War. For that, the best Spanish artists at the, at the moment, as Picasso, are invited to be representative of the Spanish pavilion. Picasso, who had been asked to make a large mural painting for the entrance of this pavilion, was ready to do the job after having read an article of the L'Humanité about the bombing of Guernica. And then he starts his masterpiece, the Guernica, the icon of the art of the 20th century and a universal symbol of peace. We are now to deal with the third part of the exhibition. Here we shall reflect on what is happening with peace and human rights nowadays. What do we know about human rights? Do we know about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948? At this room, we will go deeper in three basic rights and we will confirm how they are being violated today. We cannot finish the visit to this permanent exhibition, even talk about peace nowadays, without thinking about what happened here with violence and terrorism through these years. What have been the visible and non-visible effects of this conflict? Victims, those who have been threatened, dead, culture of violence, penitentiary policy dehumanization, which is the work done in favor of peace by a lot of anonymous people and social movements in Euskadi. The sentence by Gandhi, there is no way for peace, peace is the way that has been guiding us during this visit invites you to become an active and committed militant for peace.